You know the feeling when you have been cooked up in the house for long enough that the heating system of the house starts to be interesting? Let's talk about that. I live in Finland in a large apartment building. Let's go check how its systems work. Let's start from the roof. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. The place where I talk about things that I find interesting and hope you feel the same. Today we're taking a look at a piece of engineering that I find very interesting. It's a, it, it's a system called mechanical heat recovery system in the ventilation unit. It makes our apartment building's central heating crazy efficient. It lowers our heating bill quite a lot during the winter. If the outside temperature is more than minus 5 degrees, we don't have to import any energy for the heating of the input air. We still need some energy to heat up the radiators and whatnot, but the heating of the air is done pretty much completely by the HRV system you see here. A quick reminder that I'm an electrical engineer with a degree in medical electronics. This is not my specialty. This is something I was given keys to and I just find interesting. I'm no HVAC specialist, so if you have questions, don't point them at me. That out of the way, let's check how the system works. The system takes the heat out of the output air of the building and recirculates it back into the cold input air of the building, making the heating much more efficient. Here we can see the air inlet of the whole building. The air comes in from there. through there. The basic layout of the room is that there's a computer controlling everything in this room. There is the input channel from outside which goes under the collector box for the exhaust air. There's some thermometers and then there's the ventilator split into two upper and lower parts which contains all the technology like the heat exchanger itself plus fans and filters and shutters and then there's that tube going to the roof which is the exhaust here you can see the two heat exchangers with the loop to the motor connecting them the loop is filled with ethylene glycol and water mixture which keeps it from freezing because the air temperature in the input side can drop below zero which currently it is on the input side you can see there are bag filters here which take like dust and pollen out of the air and then there is a pressure gauge before and after the filter to measure the pressure drop over it to figure out how clogged the filter is here you can see the exhaust shutter motor and there you can see the shutter not much light in there but this is a shutter that they use for in emergency situations. Here is our exhaust thermometer. And what we're looking to into today is the heat exchanger set up in the middle. It's called a mechanical heat recovery. Here you can see the heat exchanger. So how this system works is that thermal energy is being gathered by this heat exchanger and being circulated back into the lower heat exchanger which then heats the input air to the house. So air that goes into the ceiling is much colder and the air that goes to the homes has been heated with the exhaust air. Here you can see an exhaust vent in our bathroom, which takes the air from the apartment and exhausts it out. And here you can see the air inlet in our bedroom, where the fresh air from the roof comes from. The heat exchanger has two tubes, one inlet and one outlet. Cold uh, water ethylene mixture goes in from here and picks up the heat from the air and comes out here as a bit 
warmer, meaning that it picks up thermal energy from the airflow going through the output side. If we check the temperature that's in the input side airbox coming from the apartment, it's about 20 degrees. It goes through the heat exchanger and the motor and here you can see the output air going to the roof, which is about 9 degrees. So it has gone 11 degrees down on its way there. These tubes here go to the heat exchanger circuit, which is on the other side of the room. There is a small motor here, which circulates the water ethylene glycol mixture back through the other, other tubes to the lower portion of the heat exchanger. If we check the input temperature, it's a bit under freezing point. And after the heat exchanger, it's about 13 degrees. So we add about 15 degrees of temperature in the heat exchanger here. The mechanical heat recovery is enough to heat up all the input air that comes to the house. In our building, if the temperature dips below minus 5 degrees Celsius, we need extra heat added into the heat exchanger circuit here. And how that happens is that we have a separate heat exchanger here that takes energy from our district heating and adds to that energy running in the loop. So it's basically being used to make the water in the tubes hotter. Currently we are not taking any energy from the district heating system so the pipes are cold. There's no uh, circulation in there. There is a additional heating valve here which is computer controlled and that thing decides based on the outside temperature if it needs to be adding more heat into the system or not. What I find amazing is that this small thing is enough to heat the whole apartment building's air. It's, it's like tiny. Here we have the thermostatic valve and two input and output thermometers that we can see in the software. We are currently on the roof of the building, but these tubes here go to the basement where is a secondary heat exchanger. So this circuit is not connected directly into the district heating system. I have opened some doors in the system that could cause like uh, pressure drops and whatnot, but so far it looks like I haven't caused any alarms in the system that would alert a service guy to pop up in here. Everything here is monitored by the computer and if there's like values that are off, it sends an automatic notification to the service company via text message. But yeah, there's the heat exchangers and the heat exchanger circuit. Let's go check on the basement where these tubes go and where we get the district heating energy. Here we have a bunch of bikes and a place called Lämmönjako Huone. There we go. This is our heat exchanger unit with all the little tubes going everywhere. Let's take a look. Here you can see there are two large tubes coming out of the wall. These things are the district heating input and output water line. And then there's the flow rate measurement and there's input and output thermometers that it tells how much energy we take out of the district heating. And here you can see some computer actuated valves. There is one that controls the central heat exchanger for the hot water. Then there is another same kind of system for the radiators. And this tiny little one sends the heat to the other heat exchanger upstairs for the HVAC system. Here we have another computer which is controlling everything in this room. 
This little thing here is the radiator circuit pump, which pumps water from radiator to radiator, and it takes the cold water and runs through the heat exchanger and puts it back into the radiators. We heat our water from the district heating on demand with this heat exchanger. I still find it wonderful and kind of amazing how small they are. Tells you something about the heat capacity of water. This is the hole where the cold water from the city comes to our apartment building. There's a measurement there, a pump to add some more pe pressure if needed. And you can see it goes all the way from there to the heat exchanger here. And then it gets out of as lämmin käyttövesi, as a hot water to the apartments. Other notable things in here is the poop tube, which is the main drain and uh, another drain from the rainwater. That thing is like the replacement air of our sewer system, so it actually smells like poop in here. And welcome back to the Nerdaxic Studios. Today we're gonna be taking a look at the same system we just did but from the computer. Here is the heat recovery ventilation schematic. On the lower pipe here you can see the there's the input shutter, then there's the filter, then there's the heat exchanger loop, and the motor, and there's the pressure and uh, temperature sensors. Currently the machine is requesting 12.6 degrees air and it's getting what it wants. The yellow pipe is the exhaust and currently it's getting 18.8 degrees Celsius out from the apartments. It's not actually that low because there's uh, happening some heat exchange in the building itself. But that is what the ventilation machine is getting. Then there's another filter. The heat exchanger circuit again and then it gets exhausted. Here we can see we have overabundance of heat currently. It's minus 5.1 degrees outside and our heat recovery has been set to about 80% so we have are not running it at full steam. The exhaust air currently is 7.8 degrees. If it were more cold outside the heat recovery would ramp up to 100% plus the valve here would open, so the heat exchanger would receive some energy from the district heating. And here we have the same from the downstairs computer. We have the thick tube on the top, which is the district heating hotline, which is apparently 91.4 degrees right now. It goes to the small heat exchanger for the air heating loop. This is the one that the, this is the one that's upstairs and this is the one that's downstairs. So these two are the tubes that run along the building. Currently there's no circulation so there's like a huge temperature gradient here. The heat exchanger valve here is open but it's not really taking any energy out of it as there's no circulation in the loop here. But for example here you can see that the water that is being used by the residents is about 58 degrees and there's some heat being taken from the district heating to heat the water. Hope you found my ramblings about heat recovery ventilation as interesting as I did. If you like the video give it the thumbs up and if you didn't you can stick the thumb where the sun don't shine. <laughs> Anyway, I'm trying to get to 1000 subscribers before summer so I can monetize my channel by becoming a YouTube partner. I have noticed that only a few percent of people who watch my videos are subscribed. So if you want to help me out to get to my goal and get some epic cash out of this hobby, please click the subscribe button. My channel is so small that I don't really get picked up by the YouTube algorithm yet. So subscription is pretty much the only way to get notified when I upload new content. I will thank you for it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna watch more of my content, I'd recommend to check that one out. It's all about why I keep zero balance on my bank account. It's actually quite interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.